it's your girl miss lee here good morning good afternoon or good night depending on where you are now if you're new to my channel or you're returning and you haven't done so already please can you subscribe hit the subscribe button the thumbs up the like button like this video and the notifications so that you are aware every time your girl drops new content a couple of days ago i went to see queen of sheba uh the performance is based in soho theater and can i just say what a performance it was it was amazing big up to the four actresses they were amazing they're talented they can sing they can dance they can perform they can act they were amazing shout out as well to the writer of the performance the creative director um i don't know anyone else the production team anyone else who was part of that and is part of that it is amazing it not only was emotional it was funny um there was a lot of food for thought i don't usually do like i wouldn't usually come back and do like a review or kind of give my thoughts on a performance that i've seen um just because i don't really need to do that because obviously eh, they got their own platform they're selling their own show and they're doing really well. the reason why i feel i need to come and um share my thoughts i think i got crap on my clothes is because um the performance it was really good it was thought provoking for a lot of people um but a lot of it resonated with me a lot of it hit home i came away feeling like like at the end i'm not going to say what they did because i don't want to spoil it i really want people to go and see it especially women of color dark skin women you're going to hear my door knocking by the way like let me just take a moment you're going to hear my door knocking we're going through this storm and for some reason the storm keeps knocking my door um no one is at my door it just keeps knocking but i hope it gets better throughout the day well evening because i don't want to be going through that shit when i'm sleeping anyway at the end they gave a like a sigh and they and they commented on oh we all sighed together and for me what i got from that was that we're all going through it together. What I go through as a chocolate black British woman is not um, necessarily majorly different. It may be different circumstances, but you know, I'm not the only one going through it. There are other dark skinned women, black women out there that, are go, that go through the same thing that I do, have the same experiences and some have it even worse. It's not just about dark skinned black women it's about black women on a whole it meets sexism it meets racism um it meets colorism loads of different things rolled up into one hour the show is only for one hour and it doesn't even feel that long because it's so touching especially if you can relate so they did a lot of singing and dancing they hit a lot of like um Aretha tracks Gladys Knight what else? Who else? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I don't really like a singing and dancing kind of performance because I just think, oh my God, here we go. Lord, and don't be screeching at me either. Yeah, you can hit high notes, but that's too much for these drums. But honestly, guys, it was it was just enough. And it was done really, really well. For, for me, I felt that it wasn't too much. Yeah, when I left, I felt a sigh of like, oh, I'm not alone, which I know I'm not. But um, I'm not gonna lie, I was also triggered. Mm -hmm. Last couple of days, it's triggered me. Um, now I'm not saying don't go and see it. Maybe this is a warning if you have experienced some of the things, some of the content that's in the performance that, um, you just need to prepare yourself. I didn't realise that it would be a trigger. It was a trigger for me. I've suffered colorism. I've suffered racism. Um, I've suffered sexism. Or oh, the performance covered, sorry. Racism in the workplace, um, especially when white people will ask black people constantly, you know, where are you from? You know, no, 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 where are you from, from? That kind of where are you from? I don't really struggle with that. That wasn't really a big tri trigger for me because I'm glad of my roots, my heritage. Um, I'm first generation here in the UK. My parents wasn't born here. So it, it makes me proud. And um, I don't feel like I'm not British. I don't feel by them asking me makes me feel like I'm not British. So I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. I don't know. Um, 
I struggle when I'm asked where I'm from by other black people, my, my black peers, because I find, I've covered this in another video as well, I find that they ask where I'm from in order to determine how they're going to treat me, um, what kind of love or respect or, you know, how they are going to work with me. I give you an example. This is slightly off topic of what happened in the performance, but I was working, I was at work and I just started this job and a Ghanaian guy, he was a manager, he managed the service and, um, or one of the service managers. And uh, he, came, he looked at me and he said, ha, oh, what's your name? And I said, Leah. And he goes, no, what's your name? And I said, Leah, no, what's your, what's, what's your other name? Meaning my surname. And I laughed because I knew what that bread I was on. He came up to my desk because my, my name badge, my ID badge was on the desk, but it was face down. He picked it up. He looked at it. He realised it wasn't an, a surname of African descent. And he slammed it back down and walked off. Now, from that day, that man had, was, I don't work there no more. But from that day, he was very disrespectful to me on more than one occasion. And he was a Ghanaian born and bred man. And that's not the first time I've experienced that. And it probably won't be the last. But I find that really offensive. I think it was really disrespectful. And it was really uncalled for in the workplace. It was very unprofessional as well. So, yeah, I mean, when a white person asks me, maybe because I'm used to it, why I don't take offence, I don't know. But if, if a white person was to ask me, what's my surname? No, my no, what's my full name? And comes up and looks at my name badge and then slams it back down and walks off. I can do them for racial discrimination straight away or, you know, some form of discrimination. They ask me, yes, British racism is very much um, indirect. They do it indirectly. OK, so they may not come out and call you the N word, but their behavior or the comments that they make make you know that's what they think. So we still suffer racism, but it's indirectly. So for us, it's hard, especially when you're in the workplace, to prove that you've been discriminated because of race, because of how they do it. But there are so many cases that have gone to tribunal, have gone to court and black people have won. And I'm so happy for them. Anyway, let me go back to the performance. So the performance also covered um, dating outside your race, dating a white man. I can't relate to that because I've never dated a white guy. So we move past that part. And I don't want to say too much of the performance because you know what? I want you guys to go and see it. But oh, it was good. They were strong. And the white men in the audience, I felt it for them. Not that I felt pity or nothing like that. Nah, 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 nah. It ain't that deep. But um, the way they vocalised their points and they captured eye contact with a lot of the audience members, it, it kind of holds you accountable for your behaviour. Even if you don't think you've never done it. As I said, it's food for thought. And there will be a lot of white people in there that would have thought definitely coming away, how do I behave when I'm interacting with a black woman? Also, it spoke about how black men treat us, uh, how black men don't view us as beautiful and how they don't treat us with respect. They look down on us, they disregard us and, and portray us and view us in a negative light. Now, I have this conversation constantly, like constantly with family and friends. Um, unfortunately, black men, black British men, don't find not all but there is a large majority it's not a minority i've had conversations with friends before and like oh no it's just a small minority no it's not a minority a large majority of black british men like and prefer and date either high high light skin black women mixed race women or white women us chocolate girls, we don't stand a chance. Not here in the UK. No, we don't. Um, our options are very limited. And maybe that's why a lot of black British women have now decided to date outside of the race because not an our going free us with our owner man them. So, you know, let me rephrase that. Not our owner man, because they're not ours. With the black British men, not an our going for us with them. You get me? So I saw it go. It also touched a little bit on the incident that happened um, in 2015, I believe. I'm not even going to name the club because, hear what, that is 
that club is too dotty to get any airtime. Oh, you mean? There was a club here in London. They're not the only club. It happens constantly. Um, but there was a club here in London that turned away. I think, I believe it was four black women. Was it four or five black women? Because they were too dark. I think, what, I'm sure one of them could have got in because she was light skin or mixed racy, but the rest, they couldn't, they were too dark. Now, that happens. That happens a lot. Hair in the UK, that happens a lot. Even me, myself, I would be too afraid to go to certain clubs because I can't take rejection, I can't take disrespect, and it will just go like zero to 100 real quick it's with me. And I will quote a little bit of what they said. You know, it, this, I'm not saying this was the actual words used for the incident that happened in 2015, but it was like the bouncers were saying, sorry, but not sorry, okay? You're black and you're now coming because you're too dark. We are not celebrated. We are not celebrated. We, this is what the performance was saying. We are not celebrated. We're not loved by black men and black women therefore have it even harder especially when it comes to socializing um dating being in the workplace being parents even um because of all the obstacles that we face and we always have to i find as a black woman here in the uk i always have to prove myself my opinions come across of come across as aggression my, my passion comes across as ignorance and aggression. Just everything bad. I am totally misunderstood. A lot of black women out there, even doing this video, I'm sure somebody will turn around and say, oh, here we go again, like da 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 But until you live it, which fortunately for you in your lifetime, you won't if you're not a dark woman. And if you're a dark skin chocolate woman and you haven't, experience any of the topics that I'm talking about or that was raised in the performance well done to you and congratulations and yeah you're brilliant but for a lot of us that have it's a thing they also spoke about black women being in love with their abuser uh, and what they mean by that is these performers these entertainers these rappers these singers these actors the, being in love with our um, abuser meaning we enjoy listening to their music. We enjoy watching them perform. However, if the lyrics of their song, song is, you're a hoe, you're a bitch. Oh, where's the lighty over there? Yeah, she's nice. The Latino girl, the this, that, 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 there. Anything but dark. And if you're dark, you know, you're a hoe and all the rest of it. But we praise them. These entertainers, singers, rappers alike, they disregard, they disrespect and they downgrade the black woman. I am not talking about light skin, mixed race. I'm sorry, guys. I believe that although light skin, mixed race definitely has their own struggles and challenges from being biracial, I believe that it's completely different and I'm not going to take that away but it's I believe that they're more accepted and it's completely different when it comes to a dark skinned black woman. These are the triggers for me from the performance. It was like the workplace scenarios. Um, one of the time, what, throughout one of the performances, it was like the lady was looking in a mirror and she was getting really tearful and you know, like looking at her body and getting really emotional. That's me. <laughs> it was definitely, even talking about it now, it, I, I'm starting to feel a little bit emotional, but not to the point where I'm saying, don't go and watch it. Just be mindful. And if you do get triggered easily, obviously have something in place that helps you to counteract that. Me recently, I've kind of had to shut down from the world a little bit just to kind of rebuild back my energy unfortunately in London it is a challenge to um, be a black woman and there's nothing that we can do about it I I can't change the color of my skin you know I've tried to do that before and um, I lost out big time because of that you know so I'm not going to do it again and uh, I don't have European features I'm never going to have European features so 
what I'm trying to say is I can't change who I am on my physical appearance as in I'm a black woman I have a big nose okay I can have surgery but you know what I mean um, and I'm not prepared to change it I'm unapologetically ugly <laughs> that's you know if that's how a lot of men want to view us um, but I am who I am so for me yeah Another trigger was just like, wow, would I even see change in my lifetime? Now, I'm a believer that change can happen um, if people want it to happen, but I don't know and I'm not quite sure if I'll see it in my lifetime, which is a shame. I hope we do get change because I just find that black women, we have to overprove ourselves constantly. We have to, even in the workplace, you know, I have to prove that I can do the job more than what colleagues will have to do I have to prove that um, I'm not too ghetto you know and I can laugh at their jokes and I can fit in more than what my colleagues have to do uh, I have to be careful with, with my words and how I deliver um, my points my views or, or even work just how I present myself more than what my colleagues have to do so, um, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Guys, let me know what you think of this topic. Please, if you can, I know it's only there for a short while. Try and go and watch it. Men and women, although they're talking about black women, they, they touch a lot on black men as well. So black men, black women, white men, white women, go and any other race, please go and see it. It's definitely food for thought. If you are experiencing any of the things that, that comes up, in the in the performance any of the topics you know it it may trigger you like it did me or it may not but at least you know you're not alone um, let me know what you think of this video drop all your comments in the comment section below guys please remember to like this video share it and subscribe also please hit the notification so that you are aware every time your girl drops new content till next time guys you will see me soon stay safe take care Bye.